We now welcome Gil Taub, fitness trainer and nutrition coach, to talk about rule versus variety when it comes to our food, exercise, and wellness. Thank you for joining us again, Gail. Hi, good morning, Ursula. So Gail, can you explain to us what the difference between rules versus variety is when it comes to our well-being? Yeah, so, uh, you know, a lot of people like structure. And so sometimes rules feel like the right way to go. Just tell me what to do. Give me the the program, give me the, uh, the ins and outs, and I'm just gonna do it every day. Um, rules can work well for people sometimes, but for most of us, they get in the way because our lives do not unfold every day the same way. And so the rules break very, very quickly. And without the understanding of why you're doing something or how it works for you, uh, the rules don't work long-term. Um, when we flip the switch and we look at variety or routine um, or the combination of the two, oftentimes that works a lot better for people where they acknowledge that their life is going to be different every day, unexpected or expected uh, plans. And uh, having strategies to support your routine, what you intend to do, um, oftentimes works out much, much better, especially if you create those strategies for yourself. So how can we be flexible in the way that we decide to do things while also following the rules to be healthy? Yeah. So look at yourself first. I always say, what is it that works for you? Are you a rule follower? Does it help you to have rules? And then maybe because life is more uh, um, successful oftentimes as a balance, you see where those rules can work for you under what circumstances. And then for the under for the things that the rules aren't going to work for, let's say an unexpected, um, you know, expected or unexpected time away from work or a long day of uh, at the office or maybe children uh, being sick, something unexpected. How can you fill that space with more strategies and routine? So perhaps it's a combination of two. For the person that doesn't like rules at all and has a hard time following for more than a couple of days or whatever it might be then maybe look at that routine and see how you can notice the big uh, little chunks in your life and how you might be able to support those moments with uh, a little bit more variety and routine. What should we do if we get overwhelmed or confused by the choices we're making to know what is right for us? Yeah, that happens every day. We think we know. And then we try it because someone else told us to, or someone else, you saw it online, or maybe you have this idea that, you know, this is best for you and you give it a try and it doesn't work. Uh, and then you try something else. And what ends up happening, Ursula, is honestly, we conflict and we have all these different strategies and little nuggets that we pull from everywhere. And it begins to get very confusing. And ultimately it doesn't work. So a uh, suggestion um, is to find someone like me or a professional that can help you organize your thoughts, help you start small and start to build um, that routine or those variety um, uh, strategies um, that work for you. And uh, a professional that is more interested in listening to what you have to say and is perhaps trained to help you figure it out on your own rather than just telling you what to do. Do you, I know I am awful at this, but do you have any tips on how not to compare yourself to others that seem to have their rules and varieties figured out? I know I have a really hard time doing that. I always find myself comparing other, or myself to other people who seem yeah. to have their life together. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to say, that's probably, I, I mean, we all do it. It's hard not to. We have all of these promises and images and people that we see. Um, there's not an easy answer for that other than trying to focus on yourself um, with a concerted effort. So with someone like me, a professional, and um, little by little, instead of trying to stop yourself from um, looking at these folks and wanting what they have, assuming that something's wrong with you because you can't quite get there yourself. 
uh, focusing on yourself, on the things that work for you, that are that are positive, and are about you, slowly but surely, the other stuff uh, starts to fade away. In other words, think about what you want rather than what you don't want, and then look at yourself to help you get that goal, right? Right. Yeah, definitely. Ah, that's a hard one. That is a hard one. We all do it. Ursula, we all do it. Yes. So yeah. I know sometimes it is just hard to um, find time to be healthy, you know, even including going to the gym or even making a decent meal. Um, even when you know it's crucial to staying on top of your life. Do you have any secrets on getting back on track when it seems just impossible to do that? Yeah. The secret is something little. I know it sounds so disappointing sometimes to say, I can't flip the switch tomorrow and start doing all the things that I know I should be doing. Start small, pick one small, like really small thing. Maybe it's setting an alarm on your watch or your phone or your computer, whatever it might be, um, to help you remember to breathe and think about what you want next. Maybe it's that alarm to help you remember to have a snack, a healthy, wonderful snack at 3 p.m. so that you don't enter dinner time wanting to eat your arm because you're so hungry and got lost in your day. Start small and see if you can accomplish that one small thing without being distracted and trying to add to it um, until you really become very comfortable and it becomes a little bit more habitual to do that one small thing and then add something else to it. Unfortunately, it takes time and that's something we're not good at allowing ourselves. We have to be patient. It didn't take two seconds to get the way we are today. Um, and it won't take two seconds to turn the bus around. So one small thing at a time. So in terms of exercising, do you have your, like a favorite exercise that you like to do that's kind of in moderation, mm. um, you know, that you can find time to do it every day or every, every other day? Gosh, it depends on the person. I certainly have my favorites, um, may not be somebody else's favorite favorites or even appropriate for them. But if you think of yourself and you think of something small that you want to accomplish every day. And let's say that you are more of um, uh, someone who sits at a desk or a sedentary, someone who really doesn't get up to move a lot. Maybe that exercise, you think about your upper body from your rib cage up, your arms. Um, you think about your lower body. You think about your butt. You think about your legs. You think about your heart rate. And you think about your core, all that midsection back and front. And maybe what you can do is just start small. And you can say, you know what? I'm going to do some shoulder uh, movement both ways, 10 times, super easy, right? Everybody should be able to do that, uh, provided they don't have a limitation with their shoulder or something that they're afraid of. Uh, maybe a few squats if you're comfortable with doing body squats, just a nice 10. Maybe you do it twice. Um, and uh, maybe you do a couple of sit-ups. Everybody's really different in this respect, where they're comfortable, what they feel that they can do. And that's why also having a professional help you get started with that is important so that you feel confident and that you can move. But even if you get up and move, walk around a little bit, stretch, touch your toes up and down, any of that is a really good start if you're someone who sits, or, uh, sits a lot during the day. Would you recommend having um, one of those standing desks uh, at an office? Um, I don't know how well those work. I don't know how much of a benefit you get from standing all day, but do you recommend well, that? Well, it something? depends on the person. It depends on right. the person. So a standing desk might be a solution for some, but remember when you stand a long time, there are other muscles and body parts that begin to ache as well. So you're talking about you know your calf muscles, your ankles, your feet, your glutes, uh, you know, your butt. Um, and so uh, there's, I I'm a fan of balance. I'm a fan of if you're a stander and that feels good, then sit, get, get those squats done. Make sure you're doing the opposite of what you're typically doing in order to get your body moving. If you're someone that stands, I'm sorry, sits all day long, standing up, and getting that body moving in that way is also a really good idea. But finding that zone for you, it's gonna be different for everyone. 
Well, Gil, we only have a few minutes left. Is there anything else you would like to add to uh, our viewers? Sure. I, you know, I always like to remind people, um, it's, it, it, be kind to yourself. Uh, we often think about what we want to stop doing, what we don't want anymore, what we're doing wrong. And a suggestion uh, on that mindset might be to think about instead what you want, what you can do, and what is possible. And that shift allows the other stuff to melt away if you figure out some positivity. And just be nice to yourself, guys. No one's expected to be perfect everybody's trying the best that they can and uh, to take it to another level um, you can try it yourself for sure and or find someone to help you do you have a website that you would like to share with the viewers sure um, you can reach me um, at uh, coachgale.com and my name is spelled g-a-y-l-e coachgale.com is my website you can also find me on instagram uh, at gazelle health uh, with two H's at the end. Got to do what you got to do. And you can also find me at 248-885-1400. Call or text me anytime. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for your time today, Gail. It is always such a pleasure to have you on the show with us. You are very welcome. Have a great day, Ursula.